All right, friends. So today, today, applications. Applications of separable diffy queues. Uh, I'm going to focus on one application in particular, uh, but that's today's focus applications of separable differential equations. Uh, as a reminder, what do I mean by a separable differential equation? I mean something on the order of dy dx equals 2x plus 1 times y plus 1 with y of negative 1 equal to 1. That's what I mean. I mean a separable differential equation. Separable because you've got your y stuff, got your y stuff, and your x stuff, and they are written in such a way that we can separate the y stuff to one side and the x stuff to the other side. We can divide both sides by y plus 1. We can multiply both sides by the differential dx. And those things are equivalent. In fact, they're so equivalent, I'm going purple. So how do we solve this thing? How do we solve this thing? We integrate on both sides. It's easier to integrate on the right side than it is on the left side. Right? So now I know with my initial condition that the natural log of 2 is negative 1 squared plus negative 1 plus a constant. So I know that the natural log of the absolute value of y plus 1 is x squared plus x plus the natural log of 2. Now again, most of the work is done by now. If this were a six-point question, if this were six points out of the nine on an AP-free response, you'd have one for the separation, You'd have two for the antiderivatives. You'd have one for using, I'm sorry, you'd have one extra for a plus C. You'd have one for using the initial condition. And then this last point is just getting Y by itself. How do I get Y by itself? I'm going to exponentiate both sides. E to the X squared plus X plus LN2. How could I remove the absolute value brackets? I remove the absolute value bars because y of negative 1 has to turn out positive. So I know that I'm on the positive end, not the negative end. Uh, we know that this plus ln2 means that there was a times e to the ln2 at some point. And so e to the ln2 is just 2. And we've got this thing sitting right here. So y is e to the, sorry, it's 2e to the x squared plus x minus 1. That is a separable differential equation. You have to know how to separate the variables, take antiderivatives on both sides, have a constant on the right side, use your initial condition, solve for y. You have to know how to do that. This is where your last point's going to be. You have to know how to do that. If you do not separate, you're O for the question. And that is a terrible way to handicap yourself because you know this thing is going to pop up. Now, we talked in our last lesson about the specific separable differential equation where the change in y with respect to time was proportional to y. And if the change in y with respect to time is proportional to y, this is 
exponential growth. And we said you can skip right away to y is y naught e to the kt. This is your exponential growth equation. Whenever you see some language like the rate of change of growth with uh, the rate of change of some quantity with respect to time is proportional to the quantity. Uh, the rate of change in the number of, of kangaroos is proportional to the number of kangaroos. The rate of change of the amount of money in the account is proportional to the amount of money in the account. You can automatically jump to that thing. That is exponential growth. By application, we have Newton's law of cooling. Now, Newton's law of cooling is not the kind of thing that you have to memorize. It's not. Because in Newton's law of cooling, if they were to use Newton's law of cooling on an AP exam, they would have to set up exactly what I'm setting up for you. In Newton's law of cooling, uh, you have the rate of change of temperature with respect to time. And the rate of change of temperature with respect to time is proportional to uh, the difference between the temperature of the object and the temperature of its surroundings. T sub s is going to represent the temperature of the surroundings. Uh, dt dt is negative. K is usually assumed to be a positive constant. Uh, dt dt is negative because we generally assume that you're taking some object out of a hot oven and putting it in a room that's always at 70 degrees or whatever. Or whatever. Um, folks, this thing looks a heck of a lot like this thing. And so the resulting equation from here is going to look a heck of a lot like our exponential growth equation. So in this situation, the difference between the temperature of the object and the temperature of its surroundings is equal to the original temperature of the object minus the temperature of its surroundings, e to the negative kt. It is analogous to exponential growth, where the quantity being measured is the difference between the temperature of the object and the temperature of its surroundings. By example, we're going to take a pie out of the oven. The oven's... The, the pie's original temperature is 220 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to set it on a porch to cool, and the porch is 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Fifteen minutes later, the temperature of the pie is 180 degrees Fahrenheit. How long till it's room temperature? This is standard in terms of Newton's law of cooling problems. This is a standard example of exponential decay. Uh, this is CSI stuff. So the coroner comes in, he takes the temperature of a body, and he says, this person has been dead for X number of hours. And he knows that because he knows the temperature of the room, and he knows that humans start at 37 degrees Celsius, and then they lose degrees while they are dead. This is exponential decay. So I've got temperature of the pie minus temperature of the surroundings is original temperature of the pie minus temperature of the surroundings e to the minus kt. 
So the temperature of the surroundings, that's 40 degrees. The original temperature of the object is 220, so it's 180 degrees above the temperature of the room, e to the minus kt. So now we use this piece of information, and we say that when the temperature of the pie is 140 degrees above the temperature of its surroundings, the time that has elapsed is 15 minutes. And through the wonders of a calculator, we figure out that K is 0 0.016754. That's the calculator talking. So now I want to know when T will be 70. When T is 70, that's going to mean the pie is 30 degrees warmer than the temperature of its surroundings. Now we know what K is, and we just have to find out what T is. And again, your calculator does this work for you. Your calculator tells you how many minutes that takes. Uh, so it takes 107 minutes, or depending on how the question is phrased, 92 more minutes. Exponential growth problems are short answer, multiple choice type problems because there really is not a lot of work involved. This was not a lot of work. We didn't have to derive the equation. We just work with it, um, if I may. A pan of warm water. And by warm water, I'm going to mean 46 degrees Celsius is put in a refrigerator. After 10 minutes, its temperature is 39 degrees Celsius. After 10 more minutes, its temperature is 33 degrees Celsius. Estimate the temperature of the fridge. Estimate the temperature of the fridge. So, we're told after 10 minutes, the temperature of the water is 39 degrees Celsius, which means that 39 minus the temperature of the fridge is equal to 46 minus the temperature of the fridge. I can write times e to the negative 10k. Then we're told after 10 more minutes, its temperature is 33 degrees Celsius. And so a similar equation can be written. Boy, this is a system of equations with two equations and two variables. If we divide, we get 39 minus the thing we want over 33 minus the thing we want is equal to 46 minus TF's cancel, laws of exponents, huh, huh. Well, I have a crazy thought, and, and my crazy thought is, how do I get e to the 10k by itself? Well, I can go back up to the first equation and solve for e to the 10k. I can bring e to the 10k up on the left side and bring a 39 minus t sub f down on the right side and get 46 minus t sub f over 39 minus t sub f. And so now what I have is one equation those two things are equal, one equation, one variable, my calculator does that for me, and I get that the temperature of the refrigerator is minus 3 Celsius. Calculator does the work for me. 
So really, all I want to drive home in this lesson are a couple of things. One, you can answer short answer questions using your calculator without too much difficulty. The other is that any time you see some scenario where whatever is changing depends on the quantity itself, you're looking at some version of exponential growth. And exponential growth problems always have something that establishes an initial condition, something that establishes what K is, some unknown, and we keep trying until we get it. Awesome. So you folks are amazing. I will see you tomorrow and be glad to do it.